Welcome to another edition of Journey of Hope. Stories of people sharing their journey. Each day as we wake up, we have no idea what lies ahead. The psalmist says, today is the day of the Lord. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Each week we interview different people that have been impacted by Loma Linda or been a part of Loma Linda. And our special guest today is Jacqueline Preece, all the way from Loma Linda. But she's got an amazing story and journey that she's going to share with us. Jacqueline, it's good to have you here Thank on you Journey so of Hope. Much. It's a pleasure. We've got people from around the world that are watching, and yes. we want to learn a little bit about your background. Right. Some people that are watching probably already know about you, but uh, tell us a little bit about your background, where you're from, and where you went to school, and about your family. Okay. Well, I, uh, I grew up in Arkansas. I was born in Georgia, but I grew up in Arkansas and uh, spent about 15 years there. I went to Ozark Adventist Academy and Ozark Adventist School, so uh, I upgraded from grade school right across the street all to the academy, way. all the way across the street. It was a big deal for me. And uh, that's where I met my husband in high school, um, our senior year. And So both of you going to, uh, to academy then? Yeah, academy okay. uh, together. And uh, my, my, my dad is a recording artist, and he has traveled and sung for as long as I can remember. My mom is a school teacher, and I have a brother. Okay, so tell me what's your dad's name, what's your <laughs> maiden name? We need to know Sorry. That. My right. dad is Steve Darmody. Okay. And yes, he's been an extremely big influence on me in my music ministry and my love of music and, and all the different ways that I've expressed that throughout my life. So now, did you grow up in Arkansas then? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so your dad there. was located there for a yes, while? Yes, we were there. My dad says he can work wherever there's a, uh, an airport nearby. So okay. that's where we were. And people always ask, you don't have a, an accent. That's the first thing I, whenever I, I say I, I'm from Arkansas, you don't have an accent. Yeah. Well, my mom was an English teacher, so she made sure I said y'all as little as possible. So now, <laughs> where is where's your dad from? Uh, all over. Uh, born in Texas. Okay. And my mom born in, in uh, Tulsa. So, but he, he uh, was traveled, uh, you know, lived various places when he was younger. And okay, well, we're going to learn a little bit more yeah. here, but your husband's from where? My husband is from, born in the Northwest, and, uh, but really a Texas, Texan at heart. Okay. You can't really, once you live Move there from for, the Northwest, then yeah, to how Texas. in the world does somebody in the Northwest go to school out <laughs> in Arkansas? Or, yeah, and, well, you know, it's, he, he's a pastor's kid, and so his, his dad was called down to, to okay. Texas, and that's where they ended up being for a while, and and now he's a full-blooded Texan. Oh, he is. All right. Yeah. So you, uh, let's find out what you're doing right now. Yeah. Because uh, you're in the... Mm -hmm. I, I, I work for Loma Linda University in the School of Allied Health Professions as their Alumni Affairs Officer. It's been a fantastic job. I'm so blessed to have it. I love the people I work with. It's really a blessing. I, I got that job right out of college and uh, just completely right in my, in my degree, my specialty, which was communication, PR, and advertising. I do design work and I write articles and all of that. So I just, I feel extremely blessed to have found that and work with a wonderful friend and boss. So Keisha Norris is just wonderful. So I, uh, I do that and uh, my husband goes to dental school at Loma Linda. So okay. like I've told you before, we've completely bought into Loma Linda. <laughs> yeah, you, you're working here and you're yes. the Alumni Affairs, Affairs Officer Director for the yep. School of Allied Health. That's right. Which is I think our largest school here. It has is. the most students, nearly mm -hmm. a thousand students. That's there. right. Actually over a thousand okay, students so this over, year. All right, yeah. over a thousand. So <laughs> then uh, your husband's in, in dental school and That's he's right. what year? He's a fourth year, okay, so, so we're, yeah. You're in the senior <laughs> year then. That's, That's kind of, right. kind of exciting. Not as many classes, but so he gets to really do dentistry, and he loves it. I'm so proud. Now, some things happen. Uh, let's yeah. go back and kind of talk about your journey because uh, yeah. you've got a journey that's similar to other people, but uh, right. how the Lord has opened the way for you has just been a, kind of an amazing story. Yeah. So right. let's, let's go back into your school years and kind of share with me what you were uh, yeah. sharing okay. the other day. Yeah, well, I, uh, back when I was, I think it starts at around 11 years old, I, I had a bout with depression. Now, that just kind of doesn't seem like something that a child would really go through. Uh, but, but it happened. But many children many do, do. As many I've do. interviewed other people here. That's right. I mean, starting very early in childhood, and mm -hmm. there are many, many factors that are involved. Oh, so in many. Different for different people, but right. almost at, at, the, at the age of 11. Mm -hmm. 
started for me that I, I became depressed and uh, my parents were very active in trying to help me with, with various you know, counseling and, and herbal medications and all those things as I was a child, trying to figure out what was going on. Um, you know, I got through that, that episode. Four years later, I had another really Of course, you're 11, time. you're yeah. 12, and so yeah. all kinds of things oh, are yeah. changing all, physically all changes, and emotionally everything. and hormonal changes. You know, changes. I, I had just actually gotten back from a mission trip to Romania, and you know, when your timing is off, all, all the jet lag and everything, it, and, and you come back and then go back to school and sleeping at bad times, that doesn't help any chemical thing going on when you're a child, when How when old were you at this point then, 14, 15? Well, this, uh, yeah, around there. Um, okay. So, you know, uh, but actually the depression at, at 11 didn't last for years. It lasted maybe a, a You'd four. have bouts kind of mm -hmm, come and go. That's right. So okay. bouts as, as my teen years uh, continued, I'd have little little problems here and there. Um, and it kind of seemed like this weird three, four year cycle. Um, and the, the worst, the worst of them all happened when I was in college, and I was a junior. I, for some reason, there was this trigger that happened in my life, and, and uh, I, I can't completely put my finger on it. But I did a lot of of counseling to try to figure it out. But there was some sort of trigger in my chemical makeup, and and I hit a really, really low depression. Uh, so low that I lost 10 pounds in a week. I didn't go to classes. A lot of people would love to lose 10 pounds. In a week. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do not suggest you this didn't, this but way. Over a period of, exactly. of, of a week, you lost 10 pounds. Yes, because I couldn't eat or or sleep or anything. And, and you're in college. I was in college. Um, I ended up uh, staying with my in-laws. Who this was at Southwestern University, where I was going to college at the time. Right. Uh, in Texas, and my in-laws were now, nearby. Now, were you married at this point? I was not. Okay. Um, my boyfriend was Brooks, sure. uh, my husband at the time, and uh, and he um, or I, I stayed with my with my in-laws for a week or so, and they just would talk with my parents and say, you know, what should we do? Kind uh, of keeping tabs back and exactly, forth. Exactly. Yeah. They're worried about you. My parents are in Georgia at that long time, ways and away. I exactly. So so I ended up going to a, a psychiatrist and. Um, they tried to help me out with some medication, and you know when I got when I get into a low point, I am definitely not against help. You know I sure. I don't want to sit in the corner and and feel bad and you feel mean ashamed. Help. You talk about either medically, uh, right. some kind of medication, yeah, or counseling. various ways. Yeah, there's many ways of being helped. Mm -hmm. okay. I, I'm I'm just looking at what can it be. I'm all ears. Somebody tell me what I should do. So I, I go to this psychiatrist and. And, and this person was not a counseling professional. He was just there to try to regulate me with medication. Well, um, he wasn't the, the best of, 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 you know, psychiatrists. Uh, because, yeah, hindsight's good. Right, in hindsight, yes. Uh, he, he gave me this medication that I'd have to do the math to pit this many milligrams with this many milligrams. I, I ended up, um, at first, feeling so much better. Okay, so are we taking more than one? But yeah, kind yeah. Of I kind of making. He said he'd give me this sample pack and put this many with this many on this day, and then when three days goes by, up it to this. And okay, I'm a little out of it, you know. So I'm trying my best. Um, so I, I, I get better. I think it's good, and and uh, I end up going home for for spring break, and I. So you, things I, had kind of leveled off? Things had leveled out. I was okay. doing okay at that point. And I had been given the, the actual prescription in, in the bottle. No math at all, right? So in the bottle. And so I kept taking, kept taking. Well, apparently I probably needed to do the math more because I ended up taking too much. And I, I didn't realize what I was doing. Um, and uh, I remember halfway through my spring break, things were okay. Everything was going good. And I just got this immediate... Something's wrong. My my chest just tightened. I got this big lump in my stomach, and um, and I looked at my mom and I said, "Mom, it's back." I said it. So you'd gone home. I'd gone home, and I felt over spring break. Yeah, I felt oh, okay. We're gonna be okay. Mom, and Dad, taking care of me. We're good. Well, at that point, it was just it was worse than it had been. Okay, the, I want to stop you right yeah. there because what we're talking about is not one day. You took too much, but over right over a period of time, yeah, we we okay. learned that the the life of of this medication is it's half life. So every day, then I I still have half of the medication before, and it kept compounding and compounding, compounding to where my system it actually made me go in the opposite direction, and I hit an all time low. Uh, so 
My parents absolutely 100% stepped up to the plate and said, we're, we're here no matter what you need. Let's figure this out. And I, I told you, my, my dad did the most. Uh, he, he bought a juicer. He said, okay, we're, we're just drinking our, our fruits and vegetables. I drink more water than I think I'd ever drink in my entire life. He goes, we're going to flush it out, you know, hot and cold showers just to kind of sweat out all these toxins and, and all of this stuff. So... So you got a uh, holistic approach. Exactly, and holistic. Cleanse the body. Exactly. All, the medicine, even though I, I am not against medicine sure. uh, as a way to regulate chemical imbalances in the least bit. Um, no, it helps many, many people. Exactly, and I and I feel like that that really um, at this point in my life, it has been something that ha is regulating me sure. and uh, continues to at the right dosage and using yeah. it the correct way. Well, I was telling you, you know, I have my thyroid taken out, yeah. so I take a, a pill every day. Yeah. I mean, so, the body produces for some people, mine doesn't, so I have to take it. And, you're, and right. for many people, they have to take some of these That's things. Right. Yeah. So anyway, so, you're going through all of this. Yes. Uh, you know, I, I told you before, it, it was an unbelievably odd experience for me emotionally when I could look at this, uh, this period in time where I was at home where my parents took such... Um, detailed care of me where it was on one side the worst couple of weeks of my life but then it was it was kind of wonderful at the same time to really see how my parents they're taking were care so, of so or so attentive and in a very loving um, and non-blaming it was never you know with depression it's not just why don't you pray more or it's not just very uh, important point. You know, yeah. It's not a matter of putting your finger on a promise yeah. and claiming the promise and straightening everything out. Right. I mean, it's a matter of working day through after things. Day after yeah. day, exactly. It's so many th different factors that are there. And they were with me to put the, that puzzle back together. And and they never said, oh, you know, it's been long enough. You know, just snap Get out of it, it already. Yes. They actually kept me out of school for another week after spring break. Um, sadly, I... <laughs> I jumped on a plane after spring break, went home to Southwestern, got a phone call right after I got off the plane saying, uh, we, from my parents, we actually just bought you a ticket to come home. You need to come home. I don't know why I put you on that plane in the first place, but we had the ticket. So we sent you back thinking it'd be okay, but no, come home. We're going to take care of you. And, uh, and, and my, my dad has, has, works at home. Uh, and my mom is a school teacher, so she had to go every day. And she said it ripped her heart out every time she had to leave. But she knew I was in good hands with my dad, and it's 100% uh, the truth. Uh, every every moment, just right there with me, and made me exercise, made me all this stuff. So doing all the right things, exactly. trying to get things straightened out. Exactly. But apparently, it must have made a difference. It did, and you know, at the end of this week, that one week that um, or the the second week that I was home. Um, my dad had said, you don't have to be fixed this one week. You can stay home as long as you need because we're not sending you back until you're better. So there's no pressure here. But it surprisingly did not take that, that long because you know we were doing that holistic approach, which was very helpful. But my dad really, uh, really put in my mind that, that um, saving grace, that idea of... Why don't you try this, Jacqueline? This may help. And this is what he said. Jacqueline, I think that something dating back to when you were a child and you experienced this depression, you fear something. And each time it's something a little different, but you fear. There's fear there. And it was involved. And he said, you, you need to become a, a scholar. You need to become completely... Uh, involved in what the Bible has to say about fear and why you shouldn't fear and the promises to hold on to, the hope that you have about not fearing. So really dig in. Right, and find really it. dig okay. in. So I said, okay, I'll try this. And Google is my friend because it's, you know, it's, it's kind of, it's hard to think, okay, here's the Bible. I'm just going to look here. What does sure. God say about fear? I Googled what the Bible says about fear and all these things. There are a lot of resources out there with some amazingly, uh, peaceful and hope driven and uh, uh, um, just wonderful fra uh, t pardon me uh, st uh, texts and phrases and, and all kinds of help thing oh yeah and and I then felt just little surges of energy little surges of adrenaline going this is hope this is what hope feels like and I'm gonna be okay and little by little this 
horrible experience brought me to where I really felt like I had a friendship and a close connection with God because he... Out of this experience. Out of this experience. He, he completely went down and said, give me your hand, I can pull you out of this. And it, it gave me hope and this is journey of hope. And you know, I'm saying without hope, it, you're you, down for the count, you, don't have anything, you know? Right. And so once I got that, I was realizing, okay, I, I, can, I can handle what comes my way, you know? And, and it was really, truthfully, So this was back in your junior year in yes, college? Yes, junior year college. Okay, so at what point did you get married then? I got married the summer after my senior year. Okay. So, uh, so you gra had graduated? That's right. Mm -hmm. And you came here mm -hmm, uh, four long. years ago. Yes, that's right. And, but something's happened here recently where you've <laughs> begun a whole new ministry. That's right. My music ministry has really taken off and it's been an amazingly wonderful experience. I, I had been asked all of my life, I mean, I started singing when I was two at my dad's concerts. I've asked, are you gonna do this? And I always said no, not because I didn't like music or singing or what my dad did for a living, but because I didn't know if I could handle, you know, sit, standing up there and doing a concert all by myself and all the responsibility that comes along with being a musician, music minister. So you recently produced this CD. Yes, called Firefly. And it's called Firefly. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> and uh, how many songs are on this? There are 11 songs, and well, one song is with my dad. Okay. We were doing a duet. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have you sing a song now. Yeah. And what is it called? This is called Always Faithful. Always Faithful. Mm -hmm. Well, this would be a good time okay. for you to share with us one of the songs on this CD. I've Always to. Faithful. <laughs> Again, I'm here, Lord, searching for the right words, so aware of who I am and who you are. Every day I seek you, yet often I deny you. How could mercy remain for one like me? Then you say that in my weakness, you are all the strength I need. You are always faithful to love me. One I stand here amazed at the measure of your grace you have given love overwhelming to one undeserving you have proven that your promise is true you are all I feel you surround me. You embrace me in spite of what I've done. And so in times of darkness, I will seek your refuge for you are my shelter and my life. I believe that in my weakness, you are all the strength I need. You are always faithful to love me, one so one worthy, 
And I stand here amazed at the measure of your grace. You have given love overwhelming to one undeserving. You have proven that your promise is true. You are At the measure of your grace, you have given love overwhelming to an undeserving. You have proven that your promise is true. You are always faithful. Thank you so much. That Thank is you. amazing. And God is faithful. It's absolutely true. Always, always faithful. Day. Well, tell us and tell me and our listening audience here how you made the decision to get into singing <laughs> on your own. I mean, you've been singing throughout your life yes, with your dad, yeah, right. different groups, but there was something that was a turning point. Yeah, really was. I was asked to sing for a, a funeral for a man that I didn't actually know. And uh, so I chose the songs, I had two songs to sing. and went there, I'm sitting and waiting for my, my chance and realizing that just the amazingly beautiful things that everyone was saying about this man and I got so involved and I felt like I knew him and I realized, you know, I'm just not good with the words. I, I wouldn't be able to walk up to this grieving wife, mother, that her, his two wonderful daughters and say anything that would make much of a difference because they're just so hurting, really words don't really do much. It's but I realized when I was standing up there singing that I could do something. These words that I was singing, they somehow in, in music. Were um, able to communicate? Yeah, absolutely. It's able to just get to the heart so much, so much easier, so much quicker almost than just words alone could do. And, and I realized that this is something that I can do to help them in their time, just give them these songs of encouragement. And when I got down from the stage, I realized, I, I said to myself, I should never say no to singing again. I, I should say yes anytime anyone asks me. You know, in the past, it, it, was, it was kind of difficult. I didn't have tracks, I didn't have anything. You'd have to come up with a song, find someone to play for you, all this. I said, well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do a CD so that I don't have to say no anymore. And at that point, then I'll just be free to do what God wants me to do. When he brings in the calls, then I'll go because I have said, I'm doing this for you. You seem to have a, a purpose for me and let's see what it is. So, so meaning and purpose yeah. and ministry and mission Absolutely. all came out of this kind of a turning point. Absolutely. So you've just really produced this new CD. And if people wanted to get it, how we're, we're going to have it on the, uh, the yeah. website on there, but tell us again. I, I have uh, a website that's uh, www.jacklinpriest.com slash music. And you can go there and there's a little tab that says store. You can do a digital download. Just get it on your iPod or iPhone and, or you can order the actual CD. Okay. So. Now, but you, this is kind of a, a team ministry because your yeah. husband is involved in this. Yes, what, what he is. What is he doing? Yeah, well, he is a amazing guitar player and singer and he actually is involved in the relive service at Loma Linda University, the, um, the young adult ministry. So okay. he does praise and worship a lot. So every time I travel or whenever I uh, do, do 
performances where I'd like to have some live musicians, you know. He, he'll he's play there. for me, that's right. All right, well, this is kind so, of exciting. Now, yeah. he's going to be graduating, and you'll probably end yeah. up moving somewhere. Probably. We're, we will see where the jobs open up. How it's the a, Lord kind of guides and directs <laughs> that's and right. leads. That's right. Well, the true. Lord has opened an amazing ministry, and through <laughs> the, the discouraging experiences that you had, mm -hmm. you know, God was there. He's always watching over us. Yes. And even though we don't know what the future holds, we know who holds the future. That's so true. And I'm confident that God is going to continue blessing you Thank in you. your ministry. Thank you. And uh, have you had your first concert yet? I have. It was just this last Saturday night. Was it, it was really wonderful. We did it at the uh, Compassio Youth Room at the Crosswalk Church in Redlands. That's so kind of a coming out then. It really was great. All yes, right. well, it was wonderful. That is My wonderful. parents came out for it. My dad did sang. They? It was yeah. great. Well, God's got a wonderful plan for your future. You. And I don't know where it's going to be, whether don't it's in either. the Midwest <laughs> or here in the West or back East, but yeah. God has got some exciting plans for both you and your husband and uh, for this new ministry that yeah. you have. And for our, our listening audience here, Jacqueline has shared her experience. There are many people that go through bouts of depression and there are many ways of finding the kind of help professionally that we need out there. But Jacqueline's got an amazing story that she has shared, how her parents as a family and a support system were right there, guiding, directing, protecting, encouraging. And there were people at the school that were a part of that support system. But through this whole experience, she's gone into an amazing ministry that's going to make an impact all around the country. For those of you that are looking on, I know that just this week, some of you have received some sobering news. God's got a plan for your life. Give him a chance. Look to him. He will open and close doors. Trust in him. Thank you. Until next week.